We're continuing now with our look at the Cybos Star Programme, the Cybos Talent Accelerator route to empower professional women. And as part of this regular series, we're speaking with people benefiting from the programme. I'm delighted to say that we are joined by Nafisa Vezula Eva Mishler. Now, she's the Clearing Solutions Specialist at Deutsche Bank. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm and really excited to be here. Thanks. And welcome to Cybos TV here on the penultimate day of Cybos 2022. Nafisa, if I can start by asking, it's your fourth year. What's the fourth year of yeah. the STAR programme? What has been your main takeaways from this year's Cybos? Well, of course, being at Cybos as a STAR participant is the main thing that I'm going to take away with me back home. And the whole experience of it, Cybos is the biggest event in banking and finance industry. So I had the opportunity to, you know, enjoy the women empowerment atmosphere that because we start our day with the inspirational speakers that which are amazing women. And then because I work in international payments, I had the opportunity to also look into the views and these exchanges in the industry, such as the hot topics are ISO migration, of course, that you, which is around the corner, and then wholesale CBDC, and in general, what, whatever is about transformation of payments, because I work there, was particularly interesting to me. So I had a great. It, it is the chance to, you know, to look into all sessions and just get rich of it. Mm. And let's stay in your segment. That's the transformation of payments. Is there one specific innovation that really stands out for you? Well, um, there is not. A one single one that they can pick out because the industry have, has been evolving in multiple areas. For example, Monday was dedicated to wholesale CBDC and 90% uh, of central banks are looking into potentials of CBDC when it comes to international payments. So that's very interesting. And of course, before that is ISO migration. It's just around the corner. We are approaching it, right? And it will set standards to frictional, uh, frictionless uh, cross-border payments. So it's really the combination of uh, these innovations that m make uh, payment exciting. You touch on the uh, CBDC being a, an important point there. Uh, do you think that the existing pain points we're having at the moment with cross-border payments can be solved by the introduction to, to this wholesale central bank digital currency? Well, uh, you know, uh, these are known pain points, right? Like cost reduction and shortening of settlement times and getting more transparent. So introduction of whole CBDC alone won't uh, be a solution. But uh, when it comes to transparency and 24-7 availability, of course, it has a potential there. And I think, um, as I mentioned, Monday was full of this information. You could look into sessions, uh, big debates. So I think it's definitely the topic that uh, worth watching and following. And you can't have a cyborg without referring to or, see, or indeed seeing fintechs. Yeah. And in relation to that, do you think that banks are perhaps a bit too late at the party when it comes to faster easier user-friendly payments? Have they left it too late or have they joined at the right time? Well, um, I would say fintechs are definitely front runners. Yeah, yeah, they shook it up and for good reasons of competition. But I wouldn't say it is too late for banks to safeguard their positions because the biggest leverage that we could have as a banking industry is our correspondent banking network. And leveraging our global reach, um, uh, I still believe uh, as a person in payment and banking that it is the right time and fintechs are something that shook, it up, uh, shook up uh, the whole industry and welcomed us into the new unknown or known. So. And uh, coming back to the STAR program itself, uh, what's been the most impactful event for you so far? Um, well, it's the... Uh, it's the combination of things, actually. Um, I think, so for STARS, Cyber started not this week, but weeks ago. Uh, it has been an incredible, you know, safe space of getting to know each other, networking and empowering us and getting prepared for the biggest event because the magnitude of it is, in reality, just amazing. So that's one thing. And for me personally, my journey, I think, to Cyber and to STAR has started with my 101, with my manager, when we sat together and found my role in a team and my purpose, um, that's going to be the impactful. And, I, and for STAR scholars, it's going to be going beyond. I, I appreciate it so much that women uh, in leadership, they said, yes, women empowerment is important for us and they make themselves available even beyond cyber. So it's going to be a continuing journey and I'm, I'm just looking for it. I think it's the start in yeah. Mm. And let's stay with this theme of women's empowerment. Mm -hmm. Are there 
any positive changes in the industry that you're observing at the moment? Because this is a conversation that has really been gaining so much traction over the years. So how is it manifesting itself in terms of the, the presence that women have in financial services and the power they wield? Yeah, that's a great question because uh, women empowerment and women in finance, it is such a complex um, matter, right? It starts with education and you, you can see how excited I am to be here. And for me, it has been um, the matter and I would like maybe to share how, how it worked for me positively. For me, it is a leadership matters. And we have been talking about sponsorship in our, um, in our mentoring sessions at STAR. So again, back to my manager. Yeah? When I just joined my team, I remember that flexibility in terms of time and task was paramount for me in, in the phase of my life. And then my manager goes, yeah, we'll, we'll work because we have tried it. And, and the key for me, the key word was, they have tried it. So I just encourage leaders to, you know, um, to try it. There is no failure in that. And uh, we have positive numbers, but if they re uh, reflect your reality, I think it a lot depends on the leadership st uh, style. And let's be honest, who doesn't, work, uh, who doesn't like to be working for open-minded, trying manager or leader? Uh, or inspirational leader. We all want to, you know, get pumped up and follow those people, right? So for me, that's, um, that's the thing. And I want to just, for those who watch and have never tried, say, it worked for me. Look, we have made it to star. <laughs> it does work. <laughs> And last yeah. question, and it's an open one from me. We've talked about some of the great points yeah. and positives of the STAR program. Mm -hmm. Was, is there anything you would sort of elaborate or build on? If you were to speak to the STARs of tomorrow about how it's impacted uh, your position, your role? Well, uh, as I said, it is for me uh, more before and after and the whole... For me, not only STAR, but the whole journey itself, it's um, a celebratory moment, sense of achievement, sense of uh, acknowledgement, and these one-on-ones, you have to be clear in your trajectory. When you talk to your one-on-one, I just can encourage all line managers or heads or whoever in these uh, sponsorship leadership positions, just be uh, trying out. And the same, when, when the opportunity, we have heard it so many times, and now I can tell the two, just try it go along. You will never fail. Never. It, look at this. You will be shining. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully many more will be watching this interview and be inspired by your journey uh, so far. Thank you so much for joining Thank us you. here on Cybers TV. Nafisa Faisola, Eva Mishler, a Clearing Solutions Specialist at Deutsche Bank. Thanks for joining us on Cybers TV.